Hey guys, I'm back. So uh, this is going to be the uh, probably one of the last videos on the cosmic ray experiment. Can't say that for sure, but um, here goes. This is going to be the comp basically a comprehensive video of everything. So I'll get started. Um, so first off, I, I should define what the goals of this project are. So uh, what am I trying to accomplish? What am I trying to do? Um, that sort of stuff. So. Basically, my goal is to detect cosmic rays and see if they influence the weather. So I basically want to see if cosmic rays will change the weather. So um, my hypothesis is that cosmic rays over a specific energy will create ionization paths through the atmosphere, which will uh, allow more clouds to condense. Um, and more clouds during the day means cooler temperatures, and during the night means warmer temperatures. So there's going to be slightly warmer, um, when, there, when there's more cosmic rays, the nights are going to be slightly warmer, and the days are going to be slightly cooler. And this should be a very uh, localized effect if there's just a cosmic ray storm in, say, my area. So supernova, something uh, sent lots of cosmic rays to where I am right now and not so much to around me. I should notice a very quick response in cloud formation. Um, that's that's my theory, and that's my that's the goal of this project is to figure out if that happens. Um, and as a consequence, uh, I need to measure the weather and cosmic rays. So I should give you the history behind this project. Um, and start off when I went to Fermilab. You can I, I'll link those videos right here on the screen. Um, but I went to the Nova detector, and I went to the um, other detectors, Minos and Minerva, which are neutrino detectors. They're um, detecting the neutrino signal from the uh, NUMI beamline at Fermilab. And I was asking them how these detectors actually worked, and the way they worked is they had a scintillator uh, plastic in the case of Minos and Minerva, and a uh, liquid in the case of Nova. Um, and for Minos and Minerva, they have this scintillator plastic attached to large metal plates, um, most of the time steel, but there was one of, the ex one of the two experiments was actually testing out different types of metal to use. And so uh, the neutrinos would create electron uh, trees in the metal, and that would um, make light in the scintillator, which then they would detect um, and measure. And so this got me uh, sort of interested in scintillators, because I'd never actually heard of them before. So... Uh, I got very in interested in uh, scintillation after this, um, and so that, that sort of introduced me to the concept. And then later I went to the University of Maryland. They had a, a sort of an open physics day where, not just physics, but every, everything else as well, uh, everything where they have uh, areas of study, and they were showing off their experiments, so I got to see some Tesla coils, uh, twin photon effect in real life. I got to listen to an extra, a lecture about the LHC, and I got to visit their cosmic ray lab. So uh, the University of Maryland has a detector, very complicated, um, that they basically fly in a weather balloon over Antarctica, and the weather pattern means that when they let it go in the middle, it actually drifts round and round um, until it spirals out uh, to the outside of Antarctica where it drops and they can collect the data and reuse it. So as a demonstration, um, they had an oscilloscope uh, hooked up to a little tiny circuit and a scintillator and a photomultiplier too. So similar to the setup that I'm running now. And they were, the basically they had the trigger on the scope set the trigger level and they could change it to detect higher energy cosmic rays or lower energy cosmic rays. And I could see the pulse on the scope. And I thought, and they were basically using it as a demonstration to show how their larger detector worked uh, with scintillators. Um, so I thought that was really cool, and at the time it didn't seem that hard to do. And now, knowing everything I know now, it's, it's not super difficult, it's not really easy, but it's not really hard either. Um, but I didn't know much at the time. Um, but I, I asked a few questions, and I got interested in it, so I decided that um, I would actually build one up myself. Um, for no other reason than just to have fun building it. Uh, I didn't have this experiment in mind at the time. I just decided to build it. Uh, so uh, I bought a photomultiplier tube on eBay, and I bought a scintillator plastic on eBay, and um, I got started. So that that is the history behind the project. Um, that's 
what uh, that's what influenced me to actually start making this experiment. And then it decided I decided it was going to be an experiment um, after my Google Science Fair project last year um, didn't didn't get me anywhere. I decided that this was going to be my new experiment. Um, it, it would be a lot more complicated, have a lot more data, be a lot more professional. I think so. Uh, that's when I decided that this was really going to be an experiment is when I started thinking about last year's Google Science Fair and this turned into an experiment and not so much just a fun project to build. So I'll just give you a brief overview of the project now. Um, I basically I have the scintillator plastic uh, which is I believe a BC404 but don't um, I, I don't actually know uh, that's what the eBay seller thought it was but not sure. Uh, but in any event, it seems to work all right for detecting cosmic rays. So it, it, apparently, according to the eBay seller, it detects UV light as well, but I'm not very interested in that. So I have the scintillator plastic and a photomultiplier tube. Um, inside, a cardboard box um, with the edges sealed with um, duct tape and then sealed with HVAC tape, which is sort of like a metal tape, and then covered in aluminum foil. And I have the aluminum foil grounded. Um, to stop uh, electromagnetic fields from getting in there because this is all very high impedance stuff with the photomultiplier tube. So I didn't want any electromagnetic fields getting in and influencing the um, my signal. So I have that inside the box. To power the photomultiplier tube, I have a CW multiplier uh, hooked up to a 110 to 230 volt transformer. So that's how I get my high voltage. I feed this in to um, some op amps. Um, a, f a filter, a comparator, a peak detector, um, an opto-isolator, so I can then send the signal to an Arduino. Um, the Arduino will um, log it uh, every once a minute um, into the open log, which is something SparkFun sells, along with a timestamp from an RTC, uh, which is a real-time clock, uh, the temperature outside, the light level outside from a light-to-frequency converter, and whether there is actually currently water running down my uh, gutter or not and so I have this all built up on just like a little proto board um, and I'm programming it with a FTDI adapter attached to the Arduino. Uh, so that's sort of a basic overview and then just to power the other electronics I just have regular voltage regulators. Alright so um, that's that's sort of a basic overview of everything I'll get into much more detail later.